Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. There we go. We got your attention. <laughs> We're going to uh, start off uh, with our, our prelude music is usually picked by the uh, singers here, but this morning we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do three prelude songs, and it's going to be kind of a hymn sing. So uh, your favorite hymn, pick one, and we'll get started, and then be ready for two more, and uh, Heather will take your song. So who? what's your favorite hymn? Shout one out, and we'll start, uh, and we'll sing it.
it's good to uh, sing some of those old hymns. I, I enjoy the old hymns. They have such deep, deep meaning and purpose, and I hope we, uh, we never lose them and always, always sing those great songs. So uh, it was nice to do that this morning. We're going to do the same thing for our praise music this morning, so be ready with your favorite three hymns. Uh, we want to welcome you. Welcome you to our worship service at Mount Chestnut this morning on this beautiful morning. And I'm so glad that, uh, to see all of you here this morning and those that are uh, uh, watching the live stream. Good morning to you as well. Are there, uh, there's a lot of things happening here at the church, especially the week after uh, next week with Holy Week. So those announcements are in your bulletin. Look them over and uh, mark your calendars for things that you uh, want to participate in. But are there any uh, announcements this morning? from the congregation. Linda? Yes. Um, we've ordered Vacation Bible School. Start thinking about how you're going to participate and help the, the youth of our community. We are not afraid to, like, hold you by your ear. Okay. That's yeah. <laughs> no, good. We were on the same wavelength. Yes. I was about to stand up and say basically. Right. So, uh, it's a, it is uh, just a date to put in your mind. It's the week of June 20th. So week of June 20th. Looking for helpers on that. I don't have a list up yet, but uh, you know, typical. There's different areas. Whether you're a leader, uh, you know, with your children around, or uh, in charge of a, of a station, uh, just be thinking about that and ways to serve there. You can contact me now, but yeah, I'll, I'll put a list out as well. So, thank you. Okay, week of June 20th. Mark your calendars. Seems like a long way off, but believe me, it'll be here before we know it. Linda. Uh, I just want to add to what Linda said about the photo uh, photos for the uh, church directory. We were talking about it at home, and she said, I think there's only like 30% that signed up, and officially, sign-up's over, but they extended it. So she came in, she might elaborate but if she wants to, but it's basically, there's a lot of people that, that didn't sign up, a lot. Yeah, the... Uh... 30% of our membership has signed up for the photo directory, so we need more people. It's pretty painless to get your picture taken, and uh, it's nice to have those. I know we all, we don't like posing and getting our pictures taken. Nobody does, but uh, down the road, it's nice to have those directory. It's nice to have them at your fingertips if you need to figure out who somebody is or try to get a hold of someone from the congregation. So uh, You can be here, you could have been here a long time, or you may have been here a short time. We want everybody to do this, okay? Everybody. Right, Linda? Correct. <laughs> we want every soul, every person. If you're, anybody here alive? Get your picture, it's a free eight by 10. I mean, really. All right. So there we are. It's a sign up. Tab the table's out there after worship. You can sign up. Pick a time slot before the good ones are all gone. Any other announcements this morning? Are there any joys or concerns this morning? Okay. Well, we'll move into our uh, call to worship. Uh, taken from Isaiah, if you could please uh, read it with me. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. 
going to sing three more songs together. So uh, what's our first one? Number 11.
Thank you, that was nice. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. As we come before him in prayer, let us remember his love for us. Together, let's pray the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Eternal God and risen King, we come before you in devotion and reverence for your kindness towards us. We confess our deep need for you today. Grant us peace in these days. Amen. We serve a risen Savior who is very much in the world today. Friends, I declare to you today, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let's stand together and sing. <clears throat> Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. a blast this morning. Everybody just kind of feel like you're sitting at home, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You know what I think we need to do, actually, which would be a very good thing? Uh, where's Melissa? Our, yeah, our clerk of session. We need to get pews that recline. <laughs> now, would that not be awesome? Sit in the recliner, singing the old hymns. That's the way to go, my friends. That's the way to go. I'll talk to a session about it at the next meeting. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. <laughs> Please share together the peace of Christ and welcome each other to this service. Everybody say hello. Again. Hi guys. Did everybody Hello new folks. Hello. If nobody else did, I will. Good morning. <laughs> sure you did. Uh, good morning. I, I think that there are Sundays we're about this far away from chaos, and I think we're there. Come on up, kids. <sighs> well, what brings you up, Linda? Oh, yes, that's right. How are you? You're growing up. You guys are going... <whistles> Everybody's growing up. Hi, Megan. 
Good morning. Even our adults are growing up. Growing out. Yeah, well, truth be known, huh? Truth be known. Well, good morning, everybody. I want to ask you a very simple question about being a Christian. What is the most important thing about being a Christian? What do you have to do? Yes. Do what? Sing to God. That's very good. Very good. Not the answer I was looking for, but very good. It's one word. What is it? What do you have to do to be a Christian? What's, what's the most important thing? What do you really have to do to be a Christian? Belief. Belief. It's like the thing that I did before my, in my beginning of my sermon. A couple of weeks ago, it scared half everybody to death. What's the most important thing? This one thing. Belief. That's all. Being a Christian is the simplest thing ever. It really is. Because all you do is believe. That's what Jesus said. Just believe in him and you'll have life everlasting. It's kind of a cool thing. It's not complicated. It's not hard. Really. Just believe. Right? You hearing me? I'm getting a lot of blank stares up here today. Maybe we shouldn't put those recliners in. That would be, that would be tough. I already, I already heard from... Ken this morning, he said, boy, you think they're sleeping now, Pastor, in your sermon. Okay, let's, let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this time of year. And we thank you for the Lenten season that really helps us to understand, Lord, the most important things of our walk with you and the most important aspects of our Christian experience. In these days, Lord, help us to believe and help our children to believe at a very young age, that they would know Christ and walk with Him. Be with us today, Father, and we'll give you praise for all you do. For we ask in Christ's name, and all the children of God said, Amen. Amen. Okay, Miss Rebecca's waiting back there for you. <laughs> Connie.
Thanks, Kenneth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Miss Dawn this morning. You can recline to the first level of, re of reclining if you want to. I'm going to milk that as long as I can today. Do your recliners do that? You have like a half recline and then a full recline? Yeah. Sure we would like that. That would be good. Are you feeling it this morning? Do you, do you wake up on a day like this when it's rainy and yucky and you just feel like rainy and yucky? Yeah, that's, that's how I'm kind of feeling this morning, feeling that way. I feel like, uh, I feel a little bit like Ron McCormick. My voice is low this morning. So good morning, everybody. We have spent quite a bit of time in that passage in John chapter 3. And, you know, and if you ask yourself the question why, or maybe you're asking the question why, why we spent so much time in the third chapter of John, it's because we are in the Lenten season, and the Lenten season does require that we uh, go over our faith, that we understand what we believe and why we believe it. Because it forces us to go... Uh, to go into the regions of reason to say why would God have to come in his son and be Emmanuel, God with us, walk with us, die on a cross and be raised again the third day. Isn't there a different way? I mean, these are questions that a lot of people ask. At least they've asked me through the years. And they're reasonable questions. They make sense. Why is the gospel what it is? And John chapter 3, Jesus really, in addressing this, in this conversation he, he's having with Nicodemus, he touches on the most important aspect of the Christian experience. Nicodemus being a, a high-ranking official, a very important Pharisee, uh, coming and talking with Jesus about what truth is and salvation. A new way, a new thing, a new understanding. Now, we're probably going to sound a little bit Wesleyan this morning, and the title of the sermon even is rather Wesleyan. You know, the choice is yours. We are a Reformed Church. A Reformed Church believes in what's called election, you know, where God says, I choose you, and I choose you, and I choose you. And so to think that the choice is ours is, is very Arminian, or Wesleyan Arminian, James Arminius. We're not going to go into history because then you definitely would need recliners and put you right to sleep. But I think Jesus is making it very clear here to Nicodemus. Believe or don't believe. Making it very clear. It's an important word. Believe. The Gospel of John is an interesting gospel, truly. Uh, I recommend it to folks who are new Christians. I recommend it to anybody. If you really want to understand what the gospel is and you want to understand God and Jesus and God in the flesh and the work of the Holy Spirit, read the Gospel of John. We have discussed earlier that Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the synoptic gospels because they mirror one another pretty much. In a lot of ways, they, uh, Mark was the first uh, gospel that was written, they believe. And, uh, and the synoptic gospels, meaning uh, the sameness, there's a sameness between Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John was written uh, for a different purpose and at a different time. And I've, I've mentioned this to you before. The gospel of John was written not to Jews, which Matthew, Mark, and Luke were. It was, it was written more for uh, the people in the town of Ephesus who were Gentiles, who had never really heard of Jesus. And so he had a completely different purpose in mind. And we're going to get to that purpose at the end this morning. But uh, let's talk about the gospel of John here. And, and here is what Jesus said, which is, uh, was really very, very good. 
There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. It's a very good and a very accurate translation of verse 18 in that passage. So, in the Gospel of John, again, John is going to explain who Jesus is in a new and a different way that people would understand from the very beginning. There isn't the lineage in chapter 1 of John. There isn't all of that. It's just, he gets right into it. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about this gospel. There are seven I am statements that are found in the gospel of John, specifically for, designed and designed for us to understand who Jesus was. Jesus explaining himself to us. The first one is found in John chapter 6 and verse 35. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. As bread sustains physical life, so Christ offers and sustains spiritual life. That's, that's an important truth that comes to us from the Word of God. We need to understand in these days that Jesus being the bread of life means that when we are hungry, we go to Him. Physically hungry, not necessarily. But we are, when we are spiritually hungry, and folks, that is all of us, we go to Christ because He is the bread of of life, and we find in him, reading in his word, who he is, the sustenance of life. Secondly, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. To a world lost in darkness, Christ offers himself as the guide. John said that in chapter 1. He starts off his gospel with that. He says, you know, Jesus the light, was the light of the world and he came into the world and the world didn't understand him. The darkness did not understand the light of Christ and they never will. He is the light of the world. Those who are lost in darkness will find guidance in Christ. Third, he said, I am the door of the sheep. I'm the door of the sheep, chapter 10. That's a great chapter in John, really great chapter. Jesus talking about uh, being the door of the sheep, and Jesus protects his followers as shepherds protect their flocks from predators. I remember being in Israel, uh, it's been six years ago, and uh, being in the fields where the shepherds were, which I showed you at Christmas, uh, uh, the, the, shield, the fields in Bethlehem overlooking Bethlehem, outside of Bethlehem, overlooking Bethlehem. But in those fields, they have in the, in the hills, they have dug these like caves and holes, really. And shepherds, whenever they felt that there was a predator nearby, would, would move their flocks into these areas and the shepherd would stand at the door for protection. So anytime the sheep were uh, in danger, the shepherd stood at the door and he said, I'm the door. Jesus protects his followers as shepherds protect their flocks from predators. Fourth, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Another great, great chapter. John chapter 11, and when uh, Lazarus had died and Jesus waited four days and he came back uh, to where Lazarus was and of course Lazarus had been dead for four days and Mary and Martha said to him, hey, you know, what's going on? We asked for you to come a long time ago. Where were you? And Jesus said, no, no, listen, I, I'm the resurrection and the life. And I think in John chapter 11, you've heard me say that the shortest verse in the Bible tells us more about God than practically any other verse. Jesus wept. That's John 11. Now, Jesus knew in a matter of minutes that, that Lazarus would be walking around with them, but he wept because he saw their sorrow. That's pretty cool. But death is not the final word for those in Christ. Do you hear me? It's not the final word. For in this world, when we believe, we are translated from life to death like that. And from death to life like that. 
Death is not the final word for those in Christ because when we believe, he, has, he is the resurrection and the life. And then five, I am the good shepherd. Back to John 10. Jesus is committed to caring and watching over those who are his. Um, you know, all of these, of course, are, are great sermons. Sermon series can be preached from any one of these seven. But here he says, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. I'm watching over you. Important to know. Six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, this doesn't go over in a, in a world that is, uh, is very pluralistic where uh, you know, there are many gods and you can believe whatever you want to believe. And here comes Jesus into a very similar world where he says, wait a minute, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody else. Yeah, but that seems rather intolerant or something. Hmm. I didn't say it. He did. Problem is, and you've heard me say it before at this time of year, he proved it, didn't he? He proved it. Fantastic. Jesus is the source of all truth and knowledge about God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And finally, seven, I am the true vine. That's a great chapter as well. John 15, I'm the vine and you are the branches. You know, by attaching ourselves to Christ, we enable his life to flow in and through us. And then we cannot help but bear fruit that will honor the Heavenly Father. So many of us are bearing bad fruit. It's because we're not attached to the vine. I'm the vine, Jesus said. You're the branches. He grafts you in. And you become a part of him. Everything you produce is what he produces. You can't help it. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So those are the seven I am statements that we find in the Gospel of John. By attaching ourselves to Christ, again, we enable his life to flow through us. Why would John write this gospel, these things in his Gospel? To explain the eternal truth about Jesus and his ministry and his life among us. He wanted to show all who read his gospel, that Jesus truly was the Son of God. All right. Here's the thing about John 2. Boy, i got to move. All right. In the Gospel of John, John remembered that when Jesus performed a miracle or spoke truth, that people had two reactions. Either they believed or they disbelieved. It, it happened all throughout the Gospel of John. If you go through and you, you document or you see in the Gospel of John when Jesus would do a great miracle, John would always remember there were those who believed and those who disbelieved. There were those who, who understood and believed what Jesus said, and then there were those who chose not to believe. Every time. That's why the gospel was written. And, and John wrote those seven I am statements, he, or he remembered those seven I am statements of Jesus to prove who Jesus was. And in doing so, either you believe or you don't. That's what Jesus just told him. Now here's the thing. For you and me. If Jesus really is who he says he is, then it's decision time. Either you believe or you don't. Either we believe that he is exactly everything he said he is, or we choose not to. Here's what John 20 says the, toward the end of the book. John writes this. John says, you know, the disciples of which I am one. I love that about John, too, because he's writing down what he saw. So cool. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. That is the purpose statement of the Gospel of John. He wants us to believe. 
So the choice is ours. And it is simple. It's not hard. Children can believe it. Either we believe or we don't. And that's where, that's where we, uh, we really come to this understanding of uh, just, what, just what the gospel is, is all about and, and how God wants to, wants to speak to us today. Let's, uh, let's pray together briefly. Father, we do thank you today for all that you have shown us in your word. There's a lot more we need to understand, there's no doubt. But Father, be with us today. We will be gathering around your table, Jesus. We've done this many, many times. But Father, as we share together as a body of Christ, as friends and brothers and sisters in Jesus, May we, Lord, believe once again. And may that belief pull us together even stronger. By the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, draw the cord of your Spirit around us and tighten that cord and bring us together in these days. We need you. Be with us, Father, I pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Folks will come from east and west, from north and south. All the citizens of God's rule in Christ will feast forever in glory. This is the Lord's table. His dinner party spread across time. And all who are walking with Jesus and all are invited to come to for, for taste of the age to come. Ask our servers if they would please to come forward. Thank you. I don't know what it is, but there's like a two-second interval where I think, okay, we're ready for this, right? Yeah. I think nobody wants to be the first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Let me continue. We all come together to sit at a table in the kingdom of God. Christ, our host, is setting a table for friends and strangers, lost and found, Together we find ourselves welcomed, loved, and free. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise to you, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the God of our mothers and fathers and our children to all generations. You, everlasting one, made us all. You fashioned us into one people and continue to love us even when we deny our godly heritage. Still you call us home to you. Through the faith of the saints who lived before us, who were dedicated to your will. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with all the people of faith in every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Sing with me, will you? Holy, 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 holy the Lord. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Holy is the Father. Holy is the Son. Holy the Spirit, blessed three in one. We share our faith together at this time by, by saying the Apostles' Creed together as the people of God. Let us say this creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed are you, most gracious God, for the gift of your child, our brother, Jesus Christ, who lived in accordance with your will, to the point of laying down his own life for the good news he preached and passed on. On the night of his arrest, he taught us how to serve one another in love with a ritual of table fellowship enjoined by Christians of all times and places. And so, in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with thanksgiving as a living sacrifice. In union with Christ's offering for us, we live out the mystery of the faith that we proclaim. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Spirit of God, make us one as we partake of these, your gifts to us, so we might be in communion with you and one another. And as we break bread together, may our eyes be opened to see your glory. As we lift the cup of salvation, may we be strengthened to follow your way. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor and praise are yours, Almighty God, both now and forever. Amen. We do have gluten-free bread. If you need it, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, okay, Katie's going to do it. Okay. The emblem of the broken body of Christ, his body broken for us on Calvary. Not much. Okay.
the emblem of the body of Christ, his body broken for us on Calvary. Gonna miss you, buddy. Really. The emblem of the body of Christ broken for us. The scriptures tell us that Jesus on the night before he was taken from his disciples took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it to his disciples and he said to them, this is my body broken for you to preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. As often as you eat this together, be reminded of what I've done for you and be thankful. Let us share the emblem of the body of Christ. This is the new covenant of my blood shed for you to preserve you blameless. If you know that chorus, would you sing that with me? Just the chorus. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> shed blood of Jesus his blood shed for us for a new covenant of salvation almost forgot I don't know about you folks but uh, the music during this time sometimes really touches me and so if 
If I sing it, sometimes I don't even realize I'm singing it because it's in my head and it comes out here. So, The scriptures also tell us that Jesus on the night before he was taken from his disciples then took the cup and he blessed it and he passed it to his disciples and he said to them, this is the new covenant of my blood shed for you to preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. As often as you drink this together, be reminded of what I've done for you and be thankful. Share with me the cup of Christ. Father, thank you for being with us here. You touch us in so many ways, and it's the most fascinating thing to see, to watch across the congregation people who are touched by the music that's played, and, and it gets us into a reverent mindset, and we're so thankful, Lord. We're thankful. We remember our lost world today, Lord. We remember those who are truly suffering in the Ukraine. All of those, Father, who are involved in this terrible mess in this war that's happening over there, we pray for the leaders of the world, Lord, that people would wise up in Russia and in Europe and that, that just calm minds would come together and find solution in peace. Father, there are times in the world, and your scripture talks about this a lot, where we have to stand up to evil. And that's what we pray for. That the nations of this world, Lord, would stand up and stand up for what is right and what is decent. We pray, Father, for those poor folks over in the Ukraine who are truly, truly suffering, have left their homes. Millions of people who've just walked away from their belongings. Father, watch over them there and all of the countries that are receiving these people, may they, Lord, uh, may they, Lord, be able to take care of them. And may we help to supply the need. Father, we live lives that are, uh, that are difficult, and we have problems sometimes. We bring them to you today. But, Father, for all of the prayers and supplications we bring before you together as your people, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for staying, folks. Please stand. Let's sing our final hymn together.
It's interesting. We decide now to follow somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we always say this, and uh, I know it gets old. I'm sorry. I apologize if it does. We're all getting old, so get used to it. Um, no, the, the, the truth is there. The truth is before us. We read the truth from God's Word. You know, it's real. It's there, man. It's right there. Now, what are you going to do with it? Are we going to go home again and say, oh, what a nice service. That was so nice. And it just goes in one ear and out the other. So the charge that I give you is the very charge that I give you every time we're together here. It's one thing to, you know, have all this knowledge out there, but it's another thing to live like you believe it. So go and live like you believe it. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you as you walk with Him in this world. May your eyes be enlightened to, to the truth. And may the Holy Spirit so fill you that you walk with Him every minute of every day. Amen. Thanks for coming.